Hi, this is Charlie Montotiello with another video on making and playing Native American flutes. This time we're in our mobile unit. A uh, little joke there. My daughter's actually at her guitar lesson, and because we've had a couple of people ask about making flutes uh, without tools, as you've noticed by some of our videos that we've made lately, um, I'd like to, to make some videos on how you can make your own flutes with little or no tools, experience, anything that looks like I might have that you may not, you know, something that I've done. So um, anyway, what we're going to do this time is we're going to make this four hole Cherokee whistle again, which uh, you guys have heard. Several times. We uh, played it in the park, we've had some videos on how to play the major scale on this thing and how to do all kinds of stuff with it. It's a beautiful little flute, um, something I really like and treasure. As many of you know, this is the start of my flute making career right here. Uh, something I wasn't going to share with people for a long time and finally decided to. What we're going to do today is we're going to make one out of a piece of sawgrass, which if you can imagine this being just about any kind of tube, the inside diameter of the tube is about 5 sixteenths of an inch in diameter. And what I've done already is just marked my holes. You can kind of see how the holes go together. And most of these tools that I have here are ones that we had in a car, <laughs> which I think uh, not everybody might have all the tools in a car that I have. But we had a sewing kit in a glove compartment. My wife keeps here because whenever you have kids or husbands that make a lot of stuff, <laughs> you keep a lot of band-aids around and keep a lot of sewing kits around. Of course, my wife sews too quite a bit. But uh, I'm going to show you where these holes belong just to give you an idea. And we're going to do this on the metric end. Let me set this one guy down. And I'm going to mark these holes on this guy for you at where I believe you should mark them on your flute. And really, to make this easy on you, like I said, we're going to do this on the metric side. And I know it says centimeters, but I'm going to give you the millimeter version. Uh, from the bottom of the sound hole, which can be anywhere, you know, up here, the sound hole can really start like it did 6,000 years ago up here and not even put a block in it, but it's harder to play that way. Um, the uh, sound hole, we're going to mark from the bottom edge of it, which it's roughly 5 millimeters square, give or take, but from the bottom of the sound hole is about 6 centimeters or 60 millimeters uh, 7.5 or 75 millimeters 7.5 centimeters and then we're looking at not quite nine and a half I would say the best measurement there on that third fingering is going to be about 94 or 93 and three quarters millimeters the next one is about 111 and a half millimeters and the bottom of this guy goes down to about 152 millimeters but once again if you've watched my other videos the bottom of this one is uh, very uh, you know it's very important to keep in mind that it may need to be a little longer or possibly even a little shorter so make it a little longer cut it shorter as you need to uh, the full length of this flute is and this particular one is six and just a little more than a half uh, inches or roughly uh, 170 millimeters really this one if you're looking at the measuring tape there is really like 168 but but keep in mind you can make this area longer as needed so there's your measurements if you haven't watched my other video on making this uh, whistle the uh, Cherokee four hole whistle that my granddad actually taught me how to make. Um, if you haven't watched our other videos, which give you probably similar measurements, I hope, <laughs> no egg on my face there, then that's basically what we're doing. And that's all there is to it. You just need those couple of very general measurements. Um, as soon as our flute book, which is almost finished here, comes out, you'll get to see how I can show you the uh, measurements of different flutes and how they vary and how they change and you can pretty much figure out where these holes go yourself instead of worrying about that but what we're going to do is going to start up on the sound hole here and i've got a, a file 
that I bought come in a little package. This one's a little rusty, but it come in a package from Harbor Freight Tools. You can get a similar file uh, at Walmart, Ace Hardware, Lowe's, Home Depot, uh, Costco if you're in the Midwest, and uh, here in the Southeast we also have Big Lots. I think you may have them out there. Uh, but a lot of stores, any store that sells a good bit of hardware, um, makes these tools. And as you may see on our window, we're getting a little bit of drizzling out here. It's been raining so much these last couple of days, and it kind of reminds me of yesterday when we started making this video. We're working against the rain here at this point. Anyway, so, uh, when we started making this video, it just basically didn't work out, so we started again here in the guitar lesson. <laughs> so, oh, my daughter wants again in guitar lessons. Pointy little end of this file. You could use anything. Pocket knife, like we did our other video. Anything. A rock. I mean, my gosh, people used to do this without drills, without torches, without... Uh, metal rods without files without anything but if you just if you're persistent and you try to do something you can do it one way or the other I use a little bit of force to get this started and then I, I've got a hole started there I can make it a little larger as I go I do recommend putting your if you're using a file or a pocket knife uh, don't do it the way I'm doing it now because I could stab myself obviously with this file and it really could hurt um, but uh, you want to be careful because you can split the river cane if you force it in there too hard but if you notice I made a really nice looking little hole just by going around in circles I mean even a, a paper clip could do this if you really wanted to a nail that had been flattened it out on the end and maybe filed to a sharp and maybe one day I need to make a video on doing this with a with a nail. It'd be a lot more work. I'm trying not to make my Billy Bob Thornton face over here. <laughs> From the movie Sling Blade. Just get some mustard. Okay, so what I'm doing is just kind of shaping these holes out a little bit with my metal file here. I guess we're a good third of the way done with the whistle already. Look at those holes. Those are pretty nice, huh? Not too bad for something I just hollowed out with a file. I know it looks like I've, I've done this a lot. Honestly, I try to do things the easy way unless I'm out on location somewhere like right now. But a couple of weeks ago we were at a, a youth retreat with a group of Cherokee Indian kids and we were teaching them how to make these whistles, which is something I really like to do, is teach other people how to make things like this. Um, but uh, we were at this youth retreat, and all we had were these files. That's why this one's bent a little bit. But uh, all we had were these files and some sandpaper, and we were set. And uh, we made lots of whistles that weekend. A lot of fun. Okay, so now we have four nice fingerings, which I'm going to take this very fine sandpaper here and just kind of lightly scrub off because smooth fingerings helps you to play better, believe it or not. Okay, so that's good. And then this top piece, if you've noticed, I have a nice little square hole in there and I have it dished out here. That's because I use a hot rod to burn this one out. This is very similar to the one that you see on my website um, for sale. But what we're going to do is we're going to file this guy across just like this. And if you notice, I'm using my thumb as a guide on how to do this. I need to guide that file. Not too bad. Let's get this a little flatter. Well, that's looking pretty good there. The next thing we're going to do is going to square this hole out. And really, the uh, sawgrass gets so thin that it uh, it's very pliable at this point. And if you notice, I'm 
breaking, chiseling, filing, doing a number of different things here to get this shape to come in the way I need it to. I'm going to go ahead and file this one just a little bit square here. There we go. And the next thing I'm going to do, it's a little tricky, but if you're careful, you can get you a nice little slant on this piece. A number of different ways you can do it. You can file it at an angle like this. By the way, you can do all of this with a piece of sandpaper, just like I've done it with a file. There's been times that I've used a toothpick to drill these holes when I had to. A toothpick. <laughs> you can do anything you want to do if you put your mind to it. Okay, I think we've got a nice little square hole. Very simple, very easy to do. And uh, so we've got a nice little square hole. There's a little bit of scar tissue in here that I'm going to clean out with this file. I don't want to file in there too much, but I do want to get that scar tissue out and uh, maybe square the hole up just a little bit more. There we go. Not too shabby. So if you can see inside of there, you can see how clean the hole is. Let's see. I don't think you can see inside of it that way too well. Not as well as I can. But um, the hole's really clean inside, which is very important. Now, one thing I've done already before I came here, because I, I was thinking I might do this in a car, is I went ahead and created a couple of these little plugs uh, for the flute. And these plugs are really the key to making this thing play. It's not hard to make, though. If you've noticed, I've got a piece of a dowel that I've sanded slightly up here and it gradually gets deeper down here and either one of these should play well but um, my dowel that I cut this off of get this guy here in hand where you can see him is, uh, is a little bit bigger this was a 3 8 dowel and I'm grinding it down to about 5 16 um, and you can see where I've done that on my sander already just to save time I brought this with me so I could show you another way to do this because a lot of people think, well, I'm never going to be able to get this slant here the way I need it or anything. It's really, it's a lot easier than it looks. Um, just need to experiment a little bit. But for the most part, I guess this is probably about a 15, 17 degree angle, uh, just like the angle of a airplane wing. You know, it's about 17 and a half degrees. It doesn't really matter though. If you went a little deeper, uh, from here and went down to here that'll work just fine too you just need to direct the air uh, in something more than a straight line you don't want it to just go straight across you want it to go to at a slant like that so there's that piece I'm gonna set that one down for just a second and then I'm gonna show you a quick and easy way to do this if you have a pocket knife on hand so here's my pocket knife here's my dowel that I've already kinda shaped to fit fit my uh, piece of sawgrass I've got. You can of course do this with a pocket knife to clean it up. You can make it smaller with a pocket knife. While we're at our youth retreat, I even did this with a couple of oak limbs because I didn't have the right size dowel for certain pieces of sawgrass. But if you come here and go and carve this out, not to make too big of a mess in my car, uh, and if you notice, I'm carving more on the end there okay there we go so just a couple of really quick nibbles with my pocket knife and you can see the angle that I've got on this guy now this isn't really beautiful but it's probably quite effective and I do want to advise you anybody that watches a lot of the steps that I do a lot of what I do is is very dangerous like right now I'm pushing against my knife with my finger but if you notice I've, I've got my thumb locked into position where it's not even going to go down. All I'm doing is scarring this. I'm not even uh, pushing against it. I'm just sliding this piece down. It's like my, my thumb and my knife are one tool that are made to do this job. But uh, all I'm doing is scoring this piece of dowel here so that I can snap it off. So watch this. Snip. Just like that. 
And then a piece of sandpaper I had laying around. Just gonna kinda clean the bottom of this guy off a little bit. It helps to have a flat surface. So I'm gonna lay my tablet underneath over here like this. And I'm going to clean the bottom end of that off where I snapped it. That's not too bad. A bit the more effort you put into something, usually the better end product you get out of it. Okay, and then so that's about it. Pretty well cleaned off up there. This is just done with my pocket knife, but at this time I'm going to go ahead and lay it on the piece of sandpaper. And go back and forth until I've got a nice flat surface. It's getting really close. I think that's not too bad. And let's see where we're at here. Got stuff laying all over my car now. <laughs> it's okay, we vacuum this thing out all the time. Let's see if this one fits in here. You don't want to break your sawgrass, so you got to be real careful to make certain that the size is exactly what you need. That sandpaper is only about 220 grit, whereas my knife here is more like 10 grit. Jesse's laughing at me. But how about that? That worked pretty snug. Didn't even use the fancy ones I made with my sander. <laughs> Let's see. I scarred it up a little bit, but that's okay. It's got a little bit of scar tissue there. So let's see how this guy sounds, if it even makes a sound at all. I say that because you've got to really, you've got to uh, work on these sometimes. Well, how about that? Not too shabby. You can adjust this little plug some. Sounds like I need to go back in a little bit. And of course, if you take your file or your knife or your bent nail or whatever you're using and clean that area up in there just a little bit, you can get rid of that uh, vibrating or airy sound. Here's another one I made yesterday while we were making the earlier video. It's just about the same. Um, I went ahead and worked on it a little bit. All I did was take this plug out and sand it off a little bit and put it back in there. But if you, uh, if you practice, you can get really good at making those, even just with a simple little file. Um, maybe you don't even have a dowel. You may not have sawgrass where you live. Um, I checked, and I've got some PVC tubing that's this size that's made for running water lines um, to, uh, like, uh, drinking fountains. <clears throat> and it works. Uh, I've got a piece of copper tubing this size, too. I've made one of these out of a metal drinking straw. Um, I've made these out of, oh gosh, <laughs> some of everything. Like I mentioned before, the first one I learned how to make, we used the bark off of a sweet gum tree is what my granddad taught me. So uh, beautiful little instrument, something that you can make, you can share with your kids, your grandkids, your next door neighbor's kids. Uh, too bad. I really like it a lot. One of my favorite musical instruments we make and such a small little guy. But uh, once again, I hope you guys enjoyed our video and uh, certainly leave us some comments if you would. Hopefully make them good. If you have any other questions about flute making or anything like this, uh, just like the gentleman that asked me about making these without the torch and without the hot rods and all this stuff, said he was waiting to get his torch bottle. Um, I went ahead and sent him a couple of pieces with an order that he placed so I think he might be able to get that going just right but uh, if you guys have any questions want to learn how to make something like this or something that you've seen that you wonder if maybe I've seen before feel free to leave me a message or send us a message on our Facebook which is Blue Bear Arts uh, you can also find our website bluebearflutes.com and send us a, a contact form on there got a lot of those I need to respond to right now we've been very busy since we came back from Teotihuacan so uh, you guys, I hope you have a good flute making experience. Be very careful. Keep in mind that all your tools, no matter what they are, they can hurt you. Um, scars all over my hands. Cut this finger off. 
uh, you know, I've got fresh ones just from recently here, from right before we went to Teotihuacan, sanded my knuckles. Uh, this kind of stuff happens, but it's part of the beautiful wonders of life. And I hope you guys have enjoyed our videos. Take care, and I look forward to seeing you again really soon. Look at this. But anyway, <laughs> flute making dedication to this greatest.